Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. So a couple weeks ago, I had planted some Chinese cabbage, bok choy. Bok choy? What's that? Chinese cabbage. Right here in three spots. And it's time now to thin them out. Unfortunately, I lost some lettuce in the meantime. I don't know what happened, but the roots rotted away and they just basically blew away. I have one left. So I don't know if I was keeping this too moist or what happened. Maybe some disease, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna have to replant those as well. I've got some other lettuce that I can throw in there, so let's get to this. So excuse the noise, my neighbor's mowing, but it's the time for me to do this, so. So what I'm doing here is I'm just, I've got these little scissors. So I'm gonna look for the better starts, and these need to be four inches, so. We'll save that and I'm gonna give that to my chickens. Now you could pull them out, but the problem is if those roots are connected to some other one's roots, then it could end up being a issue and it could rip out those other roots. So get some fine point scissors. No, they don't have to be these. These are fancy looking. Fancy pants. They're for fly tying. It's just what I've got, um, but they're a nice fine point scissor. So that's what I'm using, but anything would work really. So what I'm doing is I'm picking the largest ones, the better starts. The ones that look like maybe they don't have any pest damage. Like this one is big, but there's a little bit of stuff chewed out of it. So I'm not going to use that one. And there we go. So that row is thinned out quite a bit. Now I'll probably have to thin it out a little bit more depending on how big these get. So this one is 12 to 24 inch. That's quite far spacing. So unfortunately these ones on the end are small. I would have loved to be able to keep some on the end there. All right, so 12 inch. So all these, since they're not close, we'll just rip those out. That's a good one too, unfortunately. I gotta yank that one. So that's about eight inch. Man, I'm not gonna have a lot of these. All those come out. I can get four in a four foot bed max. That's crazy. I, I didn't think these got that big. So what I'm doing here is I am keeping them a little on this side. I, I thought about that. I probably should have left a couple over there just in case one of these gets eaten. Um, they're not gonna encroach on each other. So they're okay to leave that way. These are off onto the side, don't need those. Now this is also, I think 12 to 24 inch. Yep, 12 to 24 inch, same thing. And so if you could see, I was ripping some of those out, but these ones here are really close together. So I'm gonna trim one. Now that is definitely closer than 12 to 24. That's more like six inches. So I might have to take out one of these and we'll take out the one that is the, or we'll leave the one that's the best when the time comes to thin them out once more. So that one is the best out of those. All right, so that is definitely thinned out much less than 12 inch each. That's about four inches right there, three inches. So. A couple of those are gonna come out, but I'm gonna leave them just in case these don't really make it. This is the Napa cabbage. Let's go ahead and replant a couple of these. I might have some more Merrillville. If I don't, I've got some other lettuce that can go there. Never had that kind of issue, honestly. I've planted a lot of lettuce in here and maybe not this bed, but all my other beds and never had that issue. Let's give these to the chickens while we're at it. Oh, they're happy. They know it's coming. got a chicken laying finally boy they hadn't laid for a couple days pretty happy all right so I've got my lettuce here this is the Grand Rapids variety and this is the Merrillville so the Merrillville I'm just gonna replace a couple of these I got one two to replace on this side and the Grand Rapids uh, maybe we'll split this half half this row so let's start with that oh uh, I think I know what this issue could have been. Yep, there's fire ants. They might have eaten. Now, it's funny that they ate the lettuce and not the rest. Look at them all coming out. Let's see if I can even get this in here. I don't necessarily want to be bit up by fire ants. They coming out right there? Yep, they're coming out right there, right along that row. Let's see. 
not in over there. So let me get something to take care of that and I'll plant this another day. Diatomaceous earth works really well. Also coffee grounds. So I might sprinkle some coffee grounds there. They don't like coffee grounds. I mean, I don't know if ants eat the roots of plants, but it's possible, I guess. So I'm gonna dig in here since I got gloves now. They're not gonna bother me too much. We'll get this dug up, get them kind of angry. And then we'll sprinkle this diatomaceous earth on there and all of them that come out will be, uh, will not make it. You don't want to use it in any kind of setting where you're going to have a lot of bees. So nothing with like pollinators coming in because it'll kill the bees too. So diatomaceous earth is basically ground up crustaceans, like mini crustaceans sort of. Diatomes or something like that. They got sharp little edges that pierce the uh, exoskeleton of bugs. And then it kills uh, the bug. I'm also going to do the coffee because coffee for some reason they just ants don't like coffee from what i hear and it's worked before we got ants in my son's uh gecko cage i poured a little coffee in there and they're gone we'll see how that works um now it does take about 24 hours for them to die because what it does is pierces their exoskeleton and then allows them to dry out so once their exoskeleton is pierced then they can't keep water and then they just kind of die so we'll let that do its magic luckily it's dry because it has to stay dry the ground is a little bit dry right now, so I, I'm pretty sure it didn't rot away. Let's see if I can get this Merrillville in. How's this one doing? One looks okay, that one's dead. All right. Get another Merrillville in. There's no ants in this. So that's good. All right, let's get this planted. And once these kind of get a little bit larger, I might come in with some mulch and that's going to help keep those ants away too. That mulch is going to keep this bed a little more moist as well without having to water as often. They're not in here. Let's go ahead and plant a couple of these Merrillevilles. Right along here. All right, four more of the Merrillevilles there. We got that row there, so that's good. We can get those Grand Rapids maybe to tonight or tomorrow once those fire ants are gone. Now it's possible that doing this might just make a move and they'll move to another spot in the garden. That's possible, but. Well guys, that worked. These are no longer there. There is no ants and there's one, but when I dig, it's not like a big old ant hill that they're all piling out of. So. I can safely come through here and plant these without as much worry with them kind of destroying the roots or anything. I don't really know if ants do that, but that could have been the whole issue here. All right, there's one. I got three more lettuce and four on that side. And we'll just do this. This is a Grand Rapids. We'll keep this marker here. Merrillville will move over here so we know it's on this side. I mean, I'll know because I know which ones I had planted, but it's good to keep marking in case you forget. Now I'm going to actually go through and water this since all the ants are gone. I'll go ahead and water it and that'll kind of help get these roots kick started. Now it's somewhat early in the morning. It's 10 o'clock. I mean, it's not really early, but the sun isn't beating overhead too much. So I feel kind of okay with water in them right now and these are the ones I planted yesterday over there and those are laid down because I I just watered them but they'll stand back up in just a little bit I think I know what had happened uh, we had some really bad wind here and since they were new seedlings I think what happened was that wind whipping them back and forth it ended up before their roots really got a hold and their stem got tough um, I think it snapped off their stems. I think that's what happened because I saw some of them like way over here too. Um, so I think, I think that's what happened with them, but hopefully we don't get a ton of wind and these will be able to take hold and not get blown away. And I think that's also the reason that one 
is still here because there's a lip, if you see, right here. And the wind wasn't really kind of knocking this. So that didn't get blown off and, and damaged. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. And I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.